Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Wonderful to have those of you who are on already uh, right here with us. And um, so thankful to be together again online. Obviously, uh, we'd rather be in the same room, but the same Spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead, I believe, is in every place that um, this video is streaming to. And so I wanted to open up with prayer. Sorry for the loud clap there. I saw the spike in the audio go red there. Hopefully it wasn't too loud for you. But I wanted to start off reading a um, very excellent psalm, I believe. It's a little bit long, but if you want to read in your Bible with me, it's Psalm 145. And I want to start off at verse 1 and go through the whole thing and then open up with prayer today. And as other people join in, uh, we believe that there's going to be just a move of God today. We have some things in store, I believe, today that uh, will bless you, will challenge you. Also, I want to be praying for um, a great man of God today who is uh, battling uh, COVID-19 and a stroke. And there's a lot of things, a lot of um, struggles and obviously suffering in this life that we don't understand. But we do know that God hears our prayer. And so we want to lift him up today as we move forward in the service. We'll do that a little bit right after worship. But I wanted to open up with Psalm 145. For those of you who are on, you can turn in your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, use your phone and maybe look up uh, the past, the chapter, Psalm 145, or go to YouVersion if you have that app, and you can do that. And just a reminder, um, today as we're engaging in, um, share Share this with your, your friends. Share the stream with friends, family. Maybe you need to send it to your brother. Maybe you need to send it to your sister. Maybe you need to forward this on to some friends that you know. Maybe need to hear some truth today. And not just any truth, but the truth, the truth of the gospel. And so here we go. In Psalms 145, it says, I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Notice the forever and ever. That's like an eternal mindset. We're not limited to just what's happening here on earth. We're not limited uh, by life just here on earth. There's an eternal mindset that we have to have forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his mercy is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hands, you satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call on him to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Come on, we want to be part of those who are blessing his holy name forever and ever. And that's why we... Submit ourself to you right now, Lord. We just pray right now that you would just fill our mind, you'd fill our heart, our spirit, God. You'd fill us up 
Let your presence fill the rooms that we are in right now, wherever we're watching, wherever we're engaging in today to what you're doing. We pray, God, whether we're on a walk, whether we're in a car, whether we're laying down, God, just even maybe feeling alone or depressed or isolated. We just pray right now that there would be life, God, and your presence would fill every place that we're watching from today, God. Speak to each individual, Lord. Raise them up. Lift up their eyes to you, God. Whatever they're going through, whatever suffering, whatever affliction, whatever hardship they might be in right now, we just speak hope and peace and life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to open up with some worship today. Um, I love this first song we're going to sing. Um, it's called, Lord, I Need You. And how true is that? We all need the Lord in this season. We all need Him in every moment, but especially right now as we step into, I believe, a new season of um, of destiny that God really is stirring something in each and every one of us. There's a new season that's blooming, that's happening, and God wants to do great things, and we need Him in a fresh new way. Amen. Amen. God, we just worship you today. Thank you, God. Oh. 
Right now, if you want to clap where you're at or you want to just say thank you, God, for your presence, wherever you're at, just thank him for his presence. He's a good God. He's an amazing God. And we look to him. Amen. Amen. I want to take a moment right now to step into a time of prayer for a specific person, um, a 
very, very dear friend of not only um, my family over the years and, and a great pastor, prophet, preacher, and who was a pastor and actually pioneered an amazing work uh, right here in, in New York in Harlem years ago, um, is in the hospital right now with um, fighting for his life. He's, he was diagnosed with COVID. And then in the middle of that, um, he, he had a stroke uh, yesterday. And so they have sent out word to be praying, to be fasting. And so we're standing with uh, the Bonilla family today and with all of the people that are praying through MFI, through churches that have known Danny and Giselle Bonilla. We're standing with them in faith today. And I just want to encourage you because, um, you know, this man has over the years poured hundreds, thousands of encouraging words and prophecies into churches, into the life of people. And so we want to do that now for, for him. We want to speak life over him. We want to prophesy in Jesus' name that he is going to be healed, that there's going to be a great turnaround. So we're praying for Danny Bonilla today. Amazing what God can do by the prayers of his people. I was on a call last night with um, many pastors and people praying for him. It started at 11 p.m. and I believe that was very prophetic even that it started at 11 because the Bible talks about the breakthrough at the 11th hour, that there's an 11th hour breakthrough and it's even the 11th hour here on Sunday, 11, 18 a.m. We're in the 11th hour and I believe that 11th hour breakthrough can come right now for Danny Bonilla. And so we're going to lift him up and I encourage you right now just to lift your voice in prayer and agree in prayer. Obviously, um, wherever you're at, if you can lift your voice and you can lift up your um, your your heart in prayer and lift up your voice in prayer, uh, if you want to speak in tongues for a moment, I'm going to speak in tongues for a moment to just stir myself to pray because I know that uh, miracles can happen, but sometimes our faith needs to reach that level to believe it because the Bible says the prayers prayed in, prayed in faith will be answered. And so right now, just begin to lift up your voice, lift up uh, your spiritual language if you have one, or just begin to say the name of Jesus, begin to call upon his name to heal in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up right now, God, Danny Bonilla, we ask on his behalf, God, that you would have mercy on his body. You would heal him, God, from COVID. Heal him, God, from the effects of this um, stroke that he has had, God, just even yesterday. God, and we just ask, God, in behalf of the family, Lord God, that there would be a breakthrough, that there would be a miracle. Lord Jesus, right now, just as they sent out an update, we pray and we fast today, God, that the swelling on his brain will come down. God, that his blood pressure will stabilize. God, we continue to pray and believe that he's going to come out of this, God, with no, um, not even, God, one a symptom or one, God, a thing that would be wrong with his body, God, because of this. We pray, God, for a whole restoration, God, that his body would be made whole, would be made well in Jesus' name. God, we stand on behalf of this man who has sacrificed, who has given his life to the kingdom of God, who has uh, poured into the life of the church, God, worldwide. We pray that there would be a breakthrough on his behalf. Lord God, we're standing and believing God, that he will, God, be raised up from this sickness and raised up out of that hospital bed, God, to begin to continue to share a testimony. Uh, you know, when I saw just him sharing his testimony after this, uh, the moment I heard that he, he got sick and I just saw him being healed. And God, so we ask God for those kind of visions, those kind of uh, faith visions, God, to see the unseen. God, we speak it in Jesus' name. We join with every believer that is praying for him. We join with the family and Giselle. God, Danny and Giselle have blessed so many, God, churches, so many people. God, they are uh, an amazing, God, just powerful, dynamic uh, couple, God, in your kingdom. We pray, God, 
that your kingdom come, your will be done. We believe, God, that his work on earth here isn't done yet and that there's still a deposit he needs to pour into a generation, God, so that they can carry on the work. And so we pray life into his body. We pray life into his brain, God. God, that the stroke would not have any lasting effects on his body, that COVID would not have any lasting effects on his body. God, that he'd come out even healthier than uh, than he was before he got um, diagnosed with this, Lord God. And we just pray that in the mighty name of Jesus. We stand in faith, God, for those who are battling, for those who are fighting, God, um, any sickness and disease today. We pray for those, God, uh, that you would, God, begin to work on their behalf, that there would be no weapon formed against them that would prosper in Jesus' name. We stand in faith for Danny Bonilla, for anybody who's struggling today. And we just ask God, in Jesus' name, that you would do mighty miracles. Come on, I believe that for everybody watching today and everyone who's been praying for healing miracles and for um, for healing to take place. Does every prayer that we pray get answered the way we want it? No. But you know, we don't shut down our prayers and shut down our faith because maybe last time a prayer wasn't answered the way we wanted it. I was thinking about it today like this. I was thinking, uh, does every student who studies medicine come out and become a doctor? No, but they don't shut down medical schools. They don't stop teaching medicine and they don't stop receiving in students because not every student becomes a doctor. No, they continue to pour in. They continue to teach. They continue to train up the next generation of doctors. And I just felt like, you know, sometimes with our prayers, we feel like, oh, it didn't work last time. So I'm just going to kind of shut down my prayer, um, my prayer intensity right now, or my faith intensity. I'm going to pray kind of safe prayers for a while, but no, that's not the way it's supposed to be. We don't shut down because a prayer or, or the last 10 prayers or however many prayers we prayed weren't answered the way we thought. We continue to pray Pray prayers of faith, and the prayer of faith will bring healing to the sick, will open the blind eyes, will, will bring healing to those struggling with COVID, bring healing to those who've had strokes, bring healing to those who, who are, are hurting and suffering. And so we pray that in faith more than ever before, because God is a God who answers prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Man, thank you for standing in prayer. That if you know the family put out a um, a Facebook um, update and and asking people to fast and pray for Pastor Danny Bonilla, and if you would like to even start uh, maybe a twenty four hour fast right now for him, or maybe you would like to uh, begin uh, just to fast till till sundown tonight. However, maybe fast a meal and just pray. And lift up Danny Bonilla to uh, the Lord today. Uh, we would ask that that you would join in on that. I think that's an amazing thing to stand together um, across the nation for um, a great man and a great woman of God as as they're believing for a miracle turnaround. We pray for the family to Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I believe just as important uh, in our faith walk is. Our, our sowing and our giving. And so today we want to just take a moment to sow in faith. And sowing in faith has some amazing results that take place. Again, does every seed produce what we want it to? Not all the time, but we keep sowing. But God will provide for those who sow. Sowing seed is always an act of faith that pleases God. Knowing that we're pleasing God should be enough motivation for us to sow, but there is even more to it. He will provide you with more seed and increase your harvest as you continue to sow. And that is not just a JR thought, that is a Bible scripture based, and here it is. Um, it is in 2 Corinthians 9.10, it says, He, speaking of God, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing 
and increase the harvest of your righteousness. So notice he will supply and multiply your seed for what? For sowing, not for keeping, not for just keeping and eating it all, but he will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. He wants to supply so that we can continue to sow. The more we sow, the more that will grow, the more that we will reap, the more that we will have to sow again. And so the cycle does not stop. We sow in, in the strong economy. We sow in the weak economy. We sow even when we don't know what's going to take place. That rhymes. We sow when we don't know. But we sow a seed by faith, and he continues to supply. So if you're sowing today, uh, we want to pray for you, but just want you to take a moment. And um, online, you can give right now at AliveChurchNYC.com. Or if you'd like our mailing address to mail a check or um, cash, if you will, however you want to give, you can mail in if you uh, reach out to us at connect at alivechurchnyc.com. Let's not, con let's not stop sowing, but let's keep sowing by faith. So I want to pray today. God, we thank you for every person who is sowing today. God, and even those who maybe are being stretched into the whole idea of what it means to, to sow into the kingdom, we pray for faith to try it, to do it. God, we pray that those who have been faithful to do it would be blessed even beyond what they could imagine. They have more seed for sowing. God, and those who are being stretched into it, maybe for the first time, maybe to try it. God, we pray that you would show up in a mighty way to show them, God, that faith in sowing is an amazing way to live and that your kingdom come, your will be done in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, again, God bless you guys. Thank you for everyone who's on. I see the comments here today, and it's great to see uh, Jude, the Lopez's, my dad, Mark. Um, great to see uh, my mom. And I just lost the rest of the comments. So if I didn't say her name, that's why. But uh, we are here today and moving by trust and faith forward into all that God has in store. Amen. Sometimes that's all we have is to move forward in trust. You know, some people say you're falling or you're failing forward. I like to say we are trusting forward, just especially, you know, with everything in our personal lives that has been taking place and, you know, new baby and then a death uh, in the family, a very hard thing to deal with, but we're trusting forward. We're um, trying our best to find hope through the hardships that, that come and, and find life and find peace and, and joy. And there's exciting things ahead because God is a good God and he still provides and he still walks with us and he still goes before us. And so that's really um, the message today. If, if you take your Bible out or your phone out or you're taking notes, if you have a notebook, you can um, entitle today's sermon as Finding Hope through the hardships, finding hope through the hardships. And I just want to pray that God would speak to us. Lord, we pray that there would be open heavens right now. God, we receive from you your word, what you want to speak to us. We want to know that you are there, that you're with us. Your presence is so important to us because when we know you're with us, God, we can walk through fire. We can walk through the water. God, we can climb mountains. We can see mountains moved. We can, God, do the impossible because you make it possible. And we can find hope in hardships because your presence goes with us. So God, we want to go into this time right now just as we hear your word, we pray for hope in the middle of our suffering, in the middle of our affliction, in the middle of our pain, in the middle of our weakness, our sickness, whatever we might be going through. We pray for hope to shine through. And that hope is Jesus. That hope is the very person of Jesus. That hope is your life and your life more abundantly. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. And finding hope through hardships. I, I want to start off this um, idea or thought with um, some understanding before we just say a lot of um, 
maybe because uh, what can tend to happen I'll, I'll frame it this way what can tend to happen is when we talk about hope through the hardships as we maybe define and look to the hope and the faith part sometimes at least I do this I look to the hope and the faith part more than I really do at the hardship and then another hardship comes and because I don't maybe understand certain things about why hardships are coming or why suffering or why affliction or why do these things happen then my faith seems like it starts at a level that's pretty low even though God got me through another hardship or or a time that that needed you know more faith than than I could muster up and and so then I'm at a place where I'm trying to understand why this is happening rather than understanding I can have hope through the process as it's happening I hope that's clear and makes sense. So what I want to do today is focus on really understanding some more about what the Bible says about suffering, about affliction, about pain. And those aren't the funnest words in our Christian walk. I think some of the words that are part of the Christian life um, that are not very exciting to hear are these very words, or hardship, affliction, suffering, persecution, but every victorious believer, their life will include suffering and affliction. And it, it is no respecter of persons all the time unless there's like a bad decision that we made that kind of links it to a result that we're having. But there's thousands of people that go through suffering. Believers are not affliction. They go through times of pain and even my wife and I have been talking a lot about that. Like, you know, suffering isn't um, divvied out evenly. It's not given to people evenly throughout time. Some people can go through um, a breeze of a life, so to speak, or so it seems. Or maybe they don't have the kind of loss or suffering that other another person would have. But every person will go through some type of suffering and it's not fair. It's not, it's not given out or dished out evenly. Some people seem to have more suffering and more loss and more affliction and more hardship than others. And it's unexplainable and that's frustrating that it's unexplainable because we want to be able to control everything and know how can I control my life so where I can minimize the suffering that I go through, or the suffering that my kids go through, or the suffering that my family will go through. How can I minimize all that? Well, I believe there's prayers we can pray. I believe that we can see God's protection and His hand move in a mighty way. But there is going to be suffering and affliction at times. And so I want to look to understand a bit of what the Bible kind of says about that as we are finding hope in the hardships. There's several words that I believe um, will help frame this in, and I'm just going to say them here. There's affliction that the Bible talks about. There's adversity. There's ch chastening or discipline. There's distress. There's opposition. There's persecution. There's pressure. There's purging, cleaning out, there's suffering, there's testing, there's tribulation, there's trials, and there's trouble, and there's more words. But none of these words um, feel very good to us emotionally. And it's like, why would you minister today to us saying all these words? I think um, we have to realize that sometimes there's a heaviness to this life. We have to recognize that. And sometimes it's not always from bad. Because Psalms 32, 4, the first part of it says this, For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. That's the psalmist saying, God, your hand was heavy upon me. What is this? Why, why am I feeling this way? God had a purpose in why the heaviness was there. A lot of times, Will, you know, you walk into a room and you feel like maybe someone, their their bad attitude or their bad perspective on life or their disbelief in God is causing a heaviness in the room if you've ever felt that like that's a bad kind of heaviness but there can be a heaviness a weight that God has purposed 
for you in a certain season that you have to carry, that you have to walk with, and, and you don't understand totally why maybe until you get through the trial, or maybe you won't understand until eternity. But there are things that, that are heavy for us at times. All of these words that we just mentioned, affliction, adverse, adversity, chasing, distress, opposition, suffering, affliction can be kind of summarized in, in this phrase that I used to hear a lot growing up, and that's the dealings of God. The dealings of God. I heard it preached from the pulpit. I heard it uh, preached from sermons. I heard it uh, talked about in, in, in uh, life groups that, that we had growing up. Is that the dealings of God, you know, you would see someone going through a hard trial and say, oh, the dealings of God are really shaping that young man. Or the dealings of God are working on that couple. Or the dealings of God are... And, and, and it was always like, you didn't want the dealings of God. It's kind of like... You know, when, when God came to Mary, the, the mother of Jesus, that, that birthed Jesus, it's like he said, you are blessed and highly favored. And when he said that, I'm sure she kind of felt like, I don't want that kind of favor because I know what it's going to look like to people in this culture and in this day if I'm pregnant without an explanation. So you're saying, God, this is a blessing and this is a highly favored thing? Well, save that favor for somebody else. I don't know if you've ever kind of thought that or, or thought, man, this blessing has a lot more burden to it than I realized. Or this favor has some, some fire in the midst of it. And, and favor and blessing and the dealings of God don't guarantee an easy life. So the dealings of God are something that do take place in our lives and do shape us and mold us. And we can't always explain why they're happening at the time they're happening or the way they happen. But we can know it's the dealings of God in our life that, that help us know that we are his sons and we are his daughter. Hebrews 12, 7 talks about if you endure chastening, disciplining, if you endure the discipline, God deals with you as with Sons, for what son is there whom a father does not chasten or discipline? So God will deal with us to remind us that we're his son, that we're his daughter. You say, that's backwards. I want him to bless me so I'm reminded. And, and the dealings of God is part of the blessing. It, it's the whole package. You know, with my kids, it's like, I would feel like a horrible father if I never disciplined them when they show disrespect or when they um, tell a lie. This happens. This is kids. This is how you grow and how you discipline helps you realize that you actually love that person more than you want to see them continue in their sin. And so sometimes the dealings of God are because God wants to help us come out of an area of sin. Sometimes the dealings of God are for a whole nother reason. Maybe to strengthen our foundation in Him. Maybe to be tested and see, do we turn to Him when things go upside down? And we weren't planning for that. We have to realize that God's dealings don't always have a total description of why we're going through it at the moment we're going through it. But maybe we find out on the other side, or maybe we find out in eternity. But the dealings of God help us know that we are His sons and daughters. And really, there's, there's three different sources of which trials and hardships and sufferings can come from. If we look um, into the Bible, and I actually want to turn to these as we go through them. But there's some, some different sources. And the first one is going to be found in Revelations 2.10. If you want to turn to Revelations 2.10. Revelations is at the very, it's the very last book of the Bible. And um, it is, on, in my Bible, page 1,000. 
29, and it's Revelations 2, verse 10, and it says this. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Telling me not to fear before I suffer. That, that's really encouraging. Thank you, Lord. One of those verses that you don't want to read. But he says this, Jesus is saying, because it's in red in my Bible, so Jesus is speaking this, says, Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and for ten days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. Wow. So, tribulation, some trials, some sufferings come straight from the devil himself. We see that in the story of Job. Job is a great man, a prosperous man, a family man, a businessman. And then his whole world gets turned upside down three, four, five, six, however many times he loses his kids. He loses his health. He loses his prosperity. And it was because, we read in the Bible, the devil went to the Lord and said, I bet you if I go to Job and I take everything he, he has and, and I throw everything I can at him, that he won't trust in you, that he won't lift your name up, that he won't keep looking to you, that he won't trust in you any longer. And God said, well, I, I beg to differ. Go ahead and test him. Just don't take his life. And so the devil went after it. And as hard as that is to understand why God would allow that, God allowed it for a purpose. He allowed it for a purpose. So some trials come because of a direct attack, something the devil is trying to work. The Bible says it. So we have to, we can't wrap our minds around why all the time. But we do know some attacks are direct from the devil and his agents, so to speak, or his, his plans. But know that his plans do not win in the end. Amen? Another source of trials and tribulations, we're going to look at in the book of Acts, in Acts 20, verse 19. Acts 20, verse 19. In my Bible, it's page 929, Acts 20 and verse 19. It says, Serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews. So they can come from other people who are seeking to harm you. <clears throat> and it's not just pointing out the Jews as the people group who cause trials and stuff. I just want to make that clear. I'm not trying to make a joke. I'm just... I want to make sure that we're we're not taking that out of contents. It's trials that came from other people that caused suffering for Paul. Paul was caused a lot of suffering because of people who had it out for him. So suffering can come from those to seek to harm us, those who seek to see us fail. It can come from there. <clears throat> I want to turn now to Psalm 107, 17. Psalm 107, 17. And you can turn there too. I love turning to the actual Bible. You know, I've been doing my devotions by listening to the, the reading of the Bible uh, some lately, trying to divide that up with actually reading it and then listening to it. And um, there, there really is nothing like opening the Bible and, and seeing the words. Although it's great to listen and to hear and to get more of it, you know, in that way. And some people do well to listen more than they do to read. But um, I just love opening up the Bible. So if you have your Bible, open it up to Psalms 107 and verse 17. Psalms 107, verse 17. Psalms is about in the middle of the Bible, you can kind of see. And um, that's on page 506 in my Bible. Psalms 107, 17. It says this, some were fools through their sinful ways and because of their iniquities suffered affliction. So there, a source of affliction or suffering 
can be a result of our own bad choices and decisions. Some were fools. It says, and they suffered in their iniquity, and they suffered because of it. But then there's a whole other area that we always can't explain. So, yeah, the attacks from the devil, that makes sense. People who want to harm you, that makes sense. From my bad decisions and choices, yeah, I'm taught my whole life that there's going to be consequences for the choices I make. So, yeah, that kind of makes sense, but I wish it wasn't that way. And sometimes I feel like I get, you know, a trial or a tribulation because um, because I did something bad a long time ago. And is it still following me? And so we have these kind of thoughts. We, we kind of can wrap our mind around those sources. But here's, here's one that it's not always easy to wrap our minds around. And it comes to us from... The book of Proverbs, which is the main book of wisdom. There's other books that share wisdom. Psalms is one of them. But we really look to Proverbs as a, a book of wisdom. And so we know that it was written straight from the wisdom of God. And so we have to trust and understand that God's wisdom is far beyond our wisdom. That we can't always wrap our mind around things. We can't always put um, a, a, a specific understanding on something that God does all the time. But here it comes from Proverbs 3, 11 through 12. Proverbs 3, 11 through 12. It says, My son, do not despise the, despise the Lord's chastening or discipline. Do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof or correction for the Lord corrects and reproves him whom he loves as a father the son in whom he delights we get corrected we get reproved we get refined through trials we get shaped and molded and it's all because he loves us Again, what? How can I wrap my head around the fact that God puts me through a hard season, a hardship, a trial, a tribulation, an affliction, a suffering? He puts me through this to tell me He loves me. Why doesn't He just come down in flesh and tell me, I love you? God's ways are so much higher than our ways. His thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts. And so we don't always understand every little detail of his way. Don't despise when he disciplines. Don't despise when he corrects. Don't despise when he sends a trial, a tribulation. Because the testing of your faith is going to produce and endurance that you cannot get in this life without going through what God has purposed for you to go through. You'll endure. You'll, you'll hang in there. There's a stick to itiveness when you start going through the trials that God has laid before you. You begin to stick to it and become faithful because you know He is faithful even through the fire, even through the, the flood, even through these uh, mountains that we face that we can't understand, we know that He's with us. So we pray for His presence every day. Pray that He goes with you. Pray that He is with you so that He helps you not turn to the right or to the left, but to stay on the path of purpose that He has put before you. I want to read this scripture in Hebrews 12, 3 through 11. Because there's several scriptures that promise that affliction and suffering will be a part of our lives, even as Christians. And even though we don't like that, we don't understand that, we don't get it, knowing that it's in the Word of God helps us know it's true. Actually, forces us to know it's true if we're building our lives on the Word of God. 
because it's the only thing that's true. Hebrews 12, 3 through 11 says, For consider him, talking about Jesus, who endured such hostility from sinners against himself. Lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls, you have not yet resisted to the point of death, striving against sin. And I want to read it out of this different, um, out of the ESV real quick here, Hebrews 12, 3 through 11. One moment here. I didn't have it marked. My apologies. Flipping the pages, I hope you can hear them. I love the sound of the flipping pages of the Bible. Do you? Do you? Give me, give me a double uh, whoop hand if you love the, the sound of the pages flipping in the Bible. There it is. All right. Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 3 through 11. I'm going to read it again here. It says, Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when, when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens every son whom he receives. It is for the discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons and daughters. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegit illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good that we may share his holiness. For the, for the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Will we allow the Holy Spirit to train us through our trials? Or will we be the kind of kids that throw tantrums because we're going through a trial? I want to say that again. Will we be those sons and daughters that allow ourselves to be trained through our trials. And I know it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. But will we allow the work of the Holy Spirit to train us, to endure, to draw closer to God? Will we allow those trials to train us for the better, for the good that God has? It says that we go through this, this these, these kinds of things for our good that we may share in His holiness. Or will we be the kind of kids that throw tantrums every time God's disciplining us? You can be trained or throw a tantrum. And by all means, sometimes it seems like the only thing we can do is, is, is throw a tantrum. Sometimes it think, seems like the only fair thing to do is to throw a tantrum and to be upset why is this happening? Why is this suffering taking place? Why is this affliction happening? Why is this discipline in my life taking place? But we have to realize it's because God has a plan. Nothing happens without purpose. Nothing. I have a couple other scriptures here that I'll, I'll wait to get into till next week because I just want to stop here and pray that we would find hope through our hardships, but we wouldn't find false hope. We wouldn't just say a lot of false, hopeful things in the middle of our hardships and our trials and our suffering and our affliction, but we truly begin to be those that understand why these things happen in the first place. And not that we'll be able to know everything, 
but we'll at least have a firm foundation and a solid foundation on maybe why some of these things are happening and then be able to look to God even more and more and more through these times that we're going through. So I want you to find hope through the, through the hardship. I want you to find hope through the trials, through the tribulations, through the times that are not pleasant at all and that are very painful. And we can see that glimmer of hope even as we realize, man, I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of the Most High. I'm a daughter of the King. I'm a daughter of God. I'm a son of God. And that's why, maybe that's why, this is happening. You know, just on our own journey and just talking a lot with my wife and, you know, everything that she's going through right, right now with losing her father just recently. Just, you know, literally two, two days and it'll be just a month since he passed away. Seems like time has flown already, but, you know, there... There's like a patience in suffering. You know, some days seem better than others. Some days you feel stronger than others. Some days you feel like it's, it's why did this happen? You feel no strength. You feel no peace. You feel why again? Why, 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 why these kinds of things? But in the middle of it all, you, you keep trusting forward. You keep hoping forward even through the hardship. Because God is for you, not against you. He is a loving Father who shapes us and molds us even through the hardest, most painful experiences in this life. And I want to pray for you today. And then I have just a quick thought, a little bit more off subject after I pray that I just want to encourage you in. God, we just thank you for today. We give you our ourselves, our whole self, our body, our mind, our spirit, God. We realize, God, that you are in complete control of everything. And we can't always explain why the suffering and the affliction. We can't always explain why. We do know that we live in a fallen world. We do know that the devil is a liar. and He's an enemy that tries to throw um, trials or, or, or the Bible says fiery darts at us. He tries to throw us off. And there are sometimes people, God, that, that come against us and, and that we have trials with and we have hardships with. But God, sometimes it's you proving and reproving us. Sometimes it's your purpose. Sometimes it's your way, and your way is always best. Lord God, we can't always understand why it has to be trials that, that shape us and mold us when we just want the good to shape us and mold us. But we submit ourselves to you fully, understanding that you have an amazing plan in store. You want to take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good. Lord, we begin to turn our minds, God, from, from, from throwing a tantrum about things to being trained and taught and shaped into what you want us to be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Well, I just have a thought uh, just, um, just to leave with you that, that if you are going through any, any hardships or any pain, you know, we want to be here for you. We want, to, we want to be praying for you. We want to be standing with you. We know it's not easy. We know this life isn't perfect and that God um, wants us to stand together in this time, this time that we're going through as individuals, this time that you're going through, this time that our nation is going through. So I encourage you, seek God in everything. Seek Him in everything. You know, I um, just believe that these hardships that you might be going through are going to test and approve that you'll be an enduring son or daughter of God that, that's faithful to the end, that hangs on to hope because he is faithful through it all. And I, I'm just believing that for you. And then um, on another note, I just wanted to encourage you because I know sometimes we can get caught up in, in the 
everything that's being said in in the media and in um, in the world today on social media, news, whatever. Um, I just want to share just a, a hopefully a, a helpful thought for you as we go into um, this next week where many of you will be voting. I just encourage you, put it before the Lord. Put it before the Lord. Let Him guide you. Let Him lead you. Because, you know, the Bible does not say that if you vote this way or that way that you're not a Christian. Uh, it doesn't say that um, if you um, vote for this man or that man, you're, you, you're lost for all eternity. It does not say that. But it does say that God places the leaders. And so my word to you is pray, put it before God, vote, and then live the life that God has called you to live no matter who wins. Okay? So pray, vote, and then live. And then kind of move on and live the abundant life that God has called us to live. You know, you might have certain convictions or values that you're voting for or certain platform that you stand with a little bit more than another. But at the end of the day, put it before God truly. Say, God, clear my mind of my thoughts and of my preferences and just give me peace as I do this. So we pray, we do our responsibility and we vote, and then we're going to live an abundant life in, in Jesus, no matter the outcome. And, um, and we're not going to be those that then spread hate if our person doesn't win, or that spread, um, you know, all, all sorts of kind of thoughts or, or destructive thinking. If our person doesn't win, we're going to spread hope, we're going to spread life, no matter what. Amen? Amen. So I hope that encourages you because I think that's that's been a hardship that a lot of people have been going through. It's like, what am I going to do? How am I going to vote? Do I do I really believe in, in any of these candidates? Do I, you know, that that has been a hardship for our nation coming up to this point, but we're going to see God's plan and his purpose unfold in this in this life. And so we want to live our life to the fullest and abundant life. And so um, I think trying to frame it in as simple as we can. Pray, vote, and live. Pray, vote, and live. And if you do that, I think that you'll be at peace with what God will do because he will place the leader that he has in mind. Amen, amen. So I just wanted to leave that with you kind of as a, a side note. But um, if you want to reach out to us and you're going through a hardship or you're going through a trial or suffering or you've had a great loss or you're you've just been afflicted lately we want to be praying for you we want to send you encouragement uh, you can reach out to us either through Facebook here through messenger or you can text if you have our numbers or you can uh, email at connect at a live church nyc.com hope that God begins to show you more and more his goodness, even through the trials, and that you begin to respond as one who wants to be trained up as a son or daughter, not one who throws a tantrum uh, when these things happen, because it's easy to do. It's easy to fall into that category. I've been there. I know that it feels right sometimes to be able to do that, but a lot of times what's right doesn't always feel right at the time. Like, like the word says, all discipline doesn't feel good at the time. It's painful. But you'll come out of it for the good of what God wants to do. So have a great rest of your Sunday. Enjoy this fall weather. I'm glad the humidity has tapered off and that it's a little chilly in the air again. But um, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. We're moving into the month of November already. Uh, wow, God's carried us through quite the year. Uh, to this point, and so we're thankful for that. And I encourage you for that. I encourage you in that that God has carried you through from day one of this year, January first, two thousand twenty, up until now. We're going almost into November. He has carried you. He has sustained you. He has given you hope, even though the trials and the hardships have come. We're still standing, and He's a good God, and He's still King. Amen. Amen. Well, I'll leave you with that. God bless you. And we'll see you 
next Sunday.